we had a surrender church this morning on this prophetic prayer line. That we had a surrender people as unto the Lord. Amen. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. Do we even sing those type of hymnals anymore? <laughs> Thank you, God. I surrender all. Let's make a petition as unto the Lord this morning, prayer life family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, take me to the King so that I can sing unto you this song. Let's make a joyful noise as unto the Lord this morning. Prayer Life Family, we honor and praise God this morning. This is Fat Tuesday. We spell it P-H-A-T, and that's prayer, healing, and teaching. And thank God for the anointing teaching that goes forth on our prophetic prayer line. We give God the glory. We give God all the praise on this miracle, marvelous day that God has bestowed upon us yet once again. Yet once again. So we thank God for what he does for us in our lives. We thank God for the instruments that God gives us, the tools that he's uh, so fashioned us with, and every aspect of life, every aspect of life that our God affords us. He said he daily uh, renews us with his benefits, so we thank God for the benefit package that we have as a believer and as a Christian. We thank God that his blessings make one rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. Amen. Thank God that he doesn't add. So whenever you're in a place of sorrowful, in a place of woes, know that it is not of God. Amen. That's place it where it's supposed to be, and uh, then we cast our cares on him. He, we cast our cares on God, but he cares for us. So we thank God for what he does on our prophetic prayer line. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're giving those time to come in on social media this morning. Thank God for you. We pray you had a marvelous weekend. Pray you had a time of uh, trying up in power. <clears throat> and uh, you did some things that were totally different in your life. Uh, something that that's unique, something that's going to stay with you, something that you can appreciate in life. And then you go from an appreciative perspective in life and uh, not always concentrating on so much negativity. God morning to one and God morning to all. Amen. Let's don't concentrate on negative stuff. Let's thinking according to what the Bible says, whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are honest and whatsoever things are lovely. Uh, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, to, uh, whatsoever things are pure. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise to think on these things and forgetting the things which are behind and we're pressing toward the mark of the high prize or the calling, the, the high prize calling which is in Christ Jesus, the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. And so we thank God for that high calling. We thank God for the prize. Uh, we know the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But those that have and what an opportunity, but those that have the privilege and an expectation to endure until the end. And so we just take it one day at a time. We take it one day at a time. And so we bless and honor God for you. Please share the page this morning, family, if you would, when you're coming home. Our prayer line uh, on the social media, please don't forget to share that page. We're not up on YouTube yet, once again. <clears throat> uh, I guess everyone forgot uh, to call, to, to go over to uh, YouTube and go ahead and uh, subscribe to the page so that we can go live on YouTube. We want to go live yet contentious on YouTube, and so we don't have a 1,000 subscribers over there. So they've changed their format. You must have 1,000 subscribers. Uh, so you have to, in some type of a way, put yourself on YouTube to subscribe. I thought you just go on and tap a button and you just hit the thing. Uh, I don't know what the format is, and I'm not going to even worry myself about it. God is in control. Whatever God does, he'll do it. Uh, people will assist us. I'm not uh, that person for social media. I don't know how to make those numbers grow. I'm not privy to all of that stuff that you're supposed to do. Uh, I'm told that you can hit some type of a button that's a religious button for groups, and you can add all of those people on your page, even on Facebook, and you'll have thousands of viewers every day. I don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> and so 
It is what it is. Amen. So we bless God uh, for what he does for us. If the time so be it, and he'll ha have someone to come in and uh, instruct us, show us how to do those things, then he will. If not, then we do what God calls us to do. And thank God that you're here. Thank God that you're here. And we thank God most of all that you're here as well. So we bless God for every endeavor for the weekend. Uh, we pray that some of you all had opportunities to rekindle friendships, relationships, whatever it is that God would have you to do. But make sure that it is of the will of God and not something that's going to vex your spirit, something that's not going to bother you, uh, give you a, a, a place of worrisome or bothersome and things like that. Just free yourself, free your mind. It's time now we just free our minds. Amen. Don't let people in that don't uh, pay the rent to occupy your space in your mind. Amen. Let them know you can't live here rent free. And so we bless God for the freedom in the Holy Ghost. We've got freedom in the Holy Ghost. And that's where we stand. We thank God for you. Got a lot accomplished this weekend. What about you guys? I thank God for the weekend. Thank God for what we were uh, very instrumental in doing over the weekend. And we do pray that your shepherd uh, gave you some instruction. Uh, that that shepherd has a heart after God himself and then for God's people. And then these things are instituted in you to help your growth developmental process of life. That you took one of those nuggets, even if you feel the messages aren't for you, there's usually always a little nugget there. There's something that God wants to speak to your spirit about. So you got to know how to uh, listen to God, amen, and, and adhere to godly instructions and allow him to order your steps. And we know what God's word says, the steps of a righteous man, they're already ordered by God. So we thank God that he has ordered our steps as unto the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for those that stand in our stead on our prayer line on Mondays. We thank God for each and every one of those that are here on our prayer line on Mondays. The ministers of the gospel, Minister Virginia White and our Minister uh, Keisha Cheatham, and of course, Sister Joanne Jackson that stands in our stead on Mondays. We're off on Mondays, and so we bless God for those. But our prayer line, the number that you call in, they're still active on a Monday. So if you need a word and you're on social media, you can always call the prayer line at 712 uh, 432-0075, access code 533-510-POUND. We are there. We are there, one of the ministers of the gospel. They are there representing us and representing the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Uh, on last week, we talked about a lot uh, about bringing into captivity every thought. Uh, we've been talking about that, and I want for us to hear God's interpretation of how we're to actually do that. I want for the body of Christ to hear uh, how God breaks down certain things uh, in our lives and how we as a Christian should really try to do things different and trying to implement the mind of Christ in every decision that we make, trying to implement the mind of Christ in those friends that we have, people that we uh, pull into our life and our circumferences and our radiuses and, and what's allowed and what's not allowed, what, 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 um, what should be conducive to us and what should not be conducive. And those things that where God's blessings are in our life, where he makes one rich and he adds no sorrow. So we want for us to be able to break down a life and pull it apart and decipher it. And then, but yet being able to obey God and then yet being able to flourish and to uh, strive to perfection. Not an overwhelming thing, not an overbearing thing. The Bible lets us want to know, he said, my gospel is a simple gospel. It is not of a hard thing. And I think sometimes it's how we interpret what God's word says uh, to how we should live it. In the olden days, there were a lot of pressure put on uh, the church itself, and then sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, if we had found that balance, uh, would we be better now than where we are right now? Due to the fact that there was so much discipline in the church, uh, the ones that were so uh, tight on the kids and the ones that you couldn't go to ball games and you couldn't go to the movie theaters and you couldn't date, there's so many no's that you couldn't do, that those that were grew up in that era, now they ch actually... For those that even remained in the church have now gone just the opposite of what their grandparents and great-grandparents taught them. And the rest just uh, veered away totally. They just wandered away and doesn't want to have anything to do with the church because of the structuring uh, of the religion. And so a lot of times we don't now know how to separate religion from relationship. There's a covenant that we have with God, not with brick and mortar, not with the building, uh, not with those which uh, gave us their interpretation of God's will, which were the pastors. Sometimes pastors had uh, a misnomer. They had a misguiding spirit. They were misleading the people as to what God's real intentions were. But in the Bible, it lets us know that some of these things were a mystery. And now God unfolds and unveils the mystery to the apostles and the prophets nowadays. They had been held back. They had no real understanding about it. They didn't understand how to rightfully divide the word of truth. So now we find disgruntled Christians. We find people that are mad and upset. We find people that have, don't want to have anything to do with the church. And the devil loves that. 
I listen to these blogger people because I'm doing it for a reason now. At first, I thought it was just me just trying to see what's going on in the Christian uh, uh, world and our Christian churches and what have you. But whenever I continue to do it and don't dismiss it out of my spirit, then I know it's an assignment from God. I'm looking how they're persecuting the church, quite a few of the bloggers. I'm listening how they're trying to have be fault finders. How they try to low rate the pastors, try to find every scandal that they can. And then one of the main objectives that they have is, well, if they don't do it, we can't tell it. If there's nothing in there to uh, tell, then we can't talk about it. Uh, but the Bible said we've all fallen short to the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. Not giving anyone a passport. Sin does not have a passport. But I want to know... Uh, uh, why is it that everyone is so angled at the church now? Why is everybody so upset with the church? And why is it now that the church has been scrutinized? Uh, the church is now being just as the uh, woman that was calling adultery. Now they're presenting the faults to Jesus as to what's going on with his church. So we, we're looking at this when according to the word of God, he said the very elect shall be food if possible in the last days. Uh, the spirit of offense is going to be the most prevalent thing in the last days. So we know for a fact that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. We know for the fact that there's a great falling away that men will have itching ears and they'll be going from this place to that place saying Jesus is here and Jesus is here. And the Bible says you beware of those things because it is not Jesus, but you know the signs of the time that his, that his soon coming uh, is to be. The soon coming king is to be. And so this morning we're going to talk about reprocessing your thoughts, reprocessing your thoughts. We can started on last week as I stated about bringing the captivity to every thought and once you do that then I want to teach the body of Christ how to reprocess those thoughts let us pray eternal God our father we thank you yet once again on this uh, fat Tuesday we thank you for your love and we thank you for your kindness we thank you for the righteousness of who you are and so Holy Spirit we give you permission to minister on this prayer line we pray father that you will take out root out pull down every stronghold in our lives give us eyes to see and ears to hear by the spirit what you have to say to the church we know that Jesus' last words in the book of Revelation was that he addressed the church. And so we bring the church to you now, the bride of God, the woman, uh, the, the soon coming king without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. We present this body to you today, God, and we pray that the discipline of the Holy Ghost will come now on the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, I want to talk to you about how to reprocess your thoughts. How, how are we going to do that? How are we going to be able to pull away from Big Mama's teachings and how are we going to be able to pull away from uh, Papa's teachings and, and of course you know the, the family pastor that the only reason you joined the church is because your parents went there, your great grandparents and why surely if I ever go to church I'm going to go to the church that my family went to uh, that may be, have been good in that particular timing it, uh, sometimes it's just familiarity sometimes it's just a familiar spirit that we really don't know if that's the will of God for us to continue into that vein or into that religion. You may be Baptist, you may be Methodist, you may be Presbyterian, or you may be Pentecostal, you may be a Catholic. Whatever your denomination is, uh, that's just a denomination. It's a religion, but it's not the relationship with God. It's just a formatted uh, name that the uh, man has named it and called it and institutionalized it and labeled it. But the Bible lets us know that there is no Greek, no Jew, nor male, nor female in God. That we're all one in God. He has no respect of person. He doesn't uh, reign on the church of God in Christ, the church of God, uh, most holy pinnacles, whatever it is. He doesn't reign on anyone else any greater than he does the entire body of Christ itself. And so I was even reading in the Bible this weekend when uh, Jesus began to talk to the disciples. He said that you shall know my disciples by the way that they treat each other. You shall know that those that are mine, if these be my disciples, then you're going to know them by the way they treat each other. So we're looking at scandals being attached to the name of the body of Christ. We're looking at so many things that are happening in the body of Christ. And when are we going to pull together and uh, begin to be my brother's keeper? When are we going to be the body of Christ now that won't allow the devil to thumb his nose at us, that we'll come and support each other, we'll love on each other? You'll know that they're my disciples because of the way they treat each other. So what are we doing to allow the world to come in between the, the behavior and the, uh, the thoughts that we have against our own body of Christ? Why are we so willing to jump on the bandwagon and denote somebody and denounce someone and uh, actually literally persecute someone? Isn't that what Saul did? Wasn't Saul the persecutor of the Christians? So we see a Saul spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost, as he's revealing to us when we're talking this morning. The Saul spirit is now 
in the world right now. The soul spirit is in the atmosphere now, right now, that he's trying to kill off the real Christians, and he's trying to make behavior uh, be such a scandal. He's causing uh, some of the, so not everyone now, so hear me with your spirit and not your flesh. Not everyone is at fault, and not everyone has a scandal attached to their name, and not everyone has been uh, bowing down to Baal. Not everyone drank the, uh, the deadly Kool-Aid, but they're a body of Christ that seems to uh, allow things to happen in their lives, being misled in their judgment, they're being misled, misled in decision making and being misled in the people around them. So many accusations against the body of Christ being heralded and we don't really stop and, and, and let those bloggers know and all of those that are talking against the church. You really don't know the implements that they're putting in the atmosphere. You don't know the, the uh, separation process that they're using. I, I listen to the comments from the people when they're listening to that garbage with their spirit about their mouth. They say, well, that's why I left the church. That's why I'm not going to the church. That's just that reason right there. So you're strengthening the devil's will even the more. You're now allowing the people to have a pass not to attend church, and you're verifying within yourself reasoning them uh, and letting them know you've got good reason not to be there. You justify not to go there. No, you're not. The Bible says uh, how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. A house divided cannot stand. So we see the division process that the enemy is making to divide the house of God. And I want you to hear me with your spirit and not your flesh today. If you can recall, if you'll look back and if you'll be honest with yourself, this entire transition started when the dress code changed in the church. It was just a simple little thing that the casual spirit that came in that you can wear your blue jeans and you can wear your sneakers and you can wear your jerseys and you can wear the tight little skinny leg pants and the tight little skinny leg jeans and the ladies began to show all their cleavage. Exactly the whole personality of the church, it changed. The climax of the church, it changed. Uh, the, uh, the intimacy of the church changed. And those little things right there, if you look at it then, now all of a sudden you see what? You see the pastors that now uh, allegedly and supposedly are having a list of fairs, so much so that it ever has been before. You see now the pastors that are allegedly and supposedly being accused of being homosexuals and breeding a homosexual church. You see now, and it came from what? That one little simple thing that the small foxes is the ones that spoil the vine. Nobody saw Satan coming in because you were told that you could be casually dressed. Nobody saw his real intentions behind us thumbing our nose at uh, having an attire, uh, apparel on, uh, befitting for one that's going to see a king. And so now we denounce Jesus. We, we dumb it down, Jesus. We dumb it down uh, where we're going and what we're doing when we get there. So much so now that the Bible says when confusion comes in, all evil works comes in with him. So now the evil workings of Satan has crept in because of what? Uh, somebody embracing something that it's okay. You don't have to dress up to come to church. You don't have to wear hard shoes. That's my boys it's called. Mommy, we got to put on them hard shoes to go to church. You don't have to put those hard shoes on anymore. You don't have to wear uh, pantyhose. Pantyhose is a word of a bygone millennium. After a while, people won't know what pantyhose are. Uh, girdles are. They won't know those things, things that you just adjust yourself. And we're not going under anybody's clothes. We're just talking about, because that man got ridiculed the other day when he told those ladies about what kind of bras they need to wear to, 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 to attract the man and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, we're looking at those also as the forte and the structuring that has changed in the house of God. Uh, everything is a, 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 a problem and everything is a, a concern now and everything is it, it's so touch and go situations in the body of Christ. I, I want to teach you how to reprocess your thoughts and don't concentrate on the, everything else that everyone else is jumping on, everything that everyone else is making a big to do about, uh, trying to ridicule the church of God, trying to make sure that nobody wants to attend. When people begin to talk bad about the house of God, you're just co-signing what Satan wants uh, to be done anyway. You're assisting him in his assignment. You're bringing division between the brethren. You're making sure that even if they were convinced to go to the church, you are a church member and you yourself won't support your own church. You yourself won't support Jesus. You yourself won't support God. So why should they want to serve a God that you talk about so bad about the people? That we begin to lash them and talk about them and, and, and talk about all of their faults and, and everything that they do. We blast it on social media and everybody got to tell everybody off. And I, I, I think sometimes we just really overthink things. We really give it too much 
uh, thoughts, and we really give way to it. And, and you know, family, what God has to say about the matter. God says once we submit ourselves to God, we'll have to resist the devil, and then he has to flee from us. We overthink when we put too much time into thinking about or analyzing something in a way that is more harmful, amen, than it is good. It's not helpful. It's not good for us. It's harmful if we really now want to just always want to concentrate on somebody's shortcomings or somebody's faults or, or what happened in the house of God. I don't find when we were in the world that we really did all of those things. You didn't talk about your job in a, in a mannerism in which uh, you didn't go there before uh, where somebody wouldn't want to get a job where you're working. Well, if it's like that, then I don't want to work there. It's not the best, but it's okay. Well, so why can't we say that about God's house? Maybe for adventure, we're not the best, but we're doing the best that we can. Amen. We're striving for, per for, per for per perfection. We are overthinking uh, when thoughts about problems and, and ra rational issues and, and even plans dominating our waking hour. Remember, I told you sometimes when you think on something so much that, that it becomes you, uh, sometimes you'll say, well, I don't want to think about that because it's hurt too bad. Then all day long, what's in your spirit? That same thing that you didn't want to do. What did Paul say? He said, uh, Job said, I'm sorry, Job said, the thing that I wish that would not happen is what came upon me. Why? Because it's our thoughts. It's in the process in the, where we are conceiving these things in our mind. Amen. And once the thought is conceived in our mind, then it flows to the heart. Then the heart carries out the will of the thought. The heart carries out the will of that thought. Everyone overthinking occasionally, it, it's okay sometimes, but when when we're excited and we're uh, worried, afraid, or elated, then we tend to ruminate our conversations on the reactions uh, that we're either participating in or wish we had uh, to let this thing not happen in our lives. It's such a, a project. It's a, the conversations. Amen, somebody. They begin to ruminate in our mind. And then once the mind begins to take the interpretation to the heart, the heart carries out the will of those things that we've over-exaggerated. Uh, relational issues, plans dominating our waking hour, problems, worries, uh, afraid. It gets so powerful in our lives at that time that you really can't even stop that thing. M may I share with you this morning, Caroline family, that we may have any uh, uh, have seasons of overthinking when we engage in a major project. Uh, you're getting ready to plan something for the church and you're on that committee at that time. And sometimes people just overthink things that they really don't get anything done. You're going back and forth, back and forth. Well, I think we should do it this way. No, I think we should do it that way. And so, okay, can, can we just come in a happy medium? Can we just meet at a place that we're just able to uh, disagree to uh, agree to disagree? Can we just agree to disagree? Don't overthink it so much so that we shoot down everybody's opinion and then it does what? It does nothing for anyone at the time. Uh, building a house, starting a company, the plethora of details that we must be addressed that consumes our thoughts for a, a, a whole for the whole time. And you have got a business meeting and you accomplish nothing. You, you call the leaders in, and uh, uh, your ministers in. We want to have a meeting about this. We want to meet about that. But then what do we really accomplish when we left the meeting? So what's our agenda? What's our modus operandi? What are we really going to do now? I don't know, but uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. And, and so we can uh, come together and establish that we can agree to disagree, but yet we can get something done. Amen. Thinking is good, but overthinking can turn a simple matter into an overly complex one. Doesn't have to be that bad. Doesn't have to be that way. Uh, God's people are not your enemy. The church is not your enemy. The people that have scandals behind their name, they're human. I want you to hear me with your spirit and not your flesh. I'm not giving anyone a pass not to obey God, but we are not going to allow the world to come in and make us make a decision we never thought of for ourselves. You never thought of leaving your church. You never thought of walking away from God, but there's so much going on now in the body of Christ where now the Saul spirit is here to persecute the church. We're buying into that lie that I'm just going to walk away from the church. I don't want to have anything to do with those people. Yes, it's totally different. Yes, it is. The church that we know now is totally different than what your mother knew, what your great grandfather knew. It is a totally different thing. And a lot of it is just progression, but a lot of it, the majority of it is entertainment. The majority of it is not having the spirit of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And Timothy lets us know this is going to happen in the last days. The perilous times are going to come on the body of Christ. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be torn down. You're going to be scorned. You're going to be separated. But we got to know how to fight the good fight of faith. You got to know who God is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. I feel you, Holy Ghost. You can come in now, kind sir. We got to let the God on the inside be so rooted and grounded on him that nothing shall come on. What's going to separate me from the love of God? That I am fully persuaded that I know who God is. 
and the power of his might. And so we have to die to certain emotions in our lives. Amen. Certain emotions, they're so dreaded. So we have to learn how to not overthink a thing uh, more than others do. We've got to not allow the devil's uh, opinions and his conversations on the bloggers and the scandals in church. And I, I look at him and I say, man, well, who doesn't have a scandal connected to their name? Who is that they're looking for stuff? They want to be a fault finder. They want to point a finger so that they can now do what? Put stuff in your spirit and make you so critical and make you so disgusted and disappointed in those that should be in leadership, those that should be over our lives, and those that should be living squeaky keep queen squeaky clean lives, so much so that we overthink a thing, and this is all what we can see. Now when you hear messages, you say, mm. Wonder who he slept with. Mm. Wonder who he's going with. Wonder who she's going with. Is she a lesbian? Is she a real woman of God? All of these things come into play because of the Saul spirit that's persecuting the church. This spirit is so prevalent nowadays that you've got even ones that were in ministry for years and years and years. They were shepherds over the body of Christ that are now trying to tear the kingdom down. They were shepherds over the body of Christ that has nothing good to say about not one pastor, not one person. And then they'll tell you, but now I believe in God. Now don't you know, don't you believe Believe in God. Uh, come on up in here. Is that relationship? Uh, believing in him is not a relationship. You have to have covenant relationship with him. You have to know that Jesus died on the third day he rose. He's now seated on the right hand of the Father. Amen, somebody. He makes intercessions for us, and he said, I'm coming back for a church. So who is he going to come back for if we're not the church? If we're not the ecclesia, if we're not the ecclesia, if we are not the called out ones, he said, you shall know them by the way they love each other. You're going to know that these people are my disciples because they love each other. We're not loving on each other. We're doing exactly what Satan wants us to do. We're tearing down each other. We're talking about each other. We're tearing up. We're persecuting just the same as Saul did. And so now God said, enough is enough. When is it now that we can come together to let the devil know we're in agreement? We're not in agreement with sin. We're not, come on up and here. I, I don't agree with sin, but I don't agree with you either, devil. You're not going to talk about our brothers. You're not going to downrate. You're not going to low rate. You're not going to torment the church. You're not going to persecute the church. And so we, as a body of Christ, we've got to learn how to know who we are in Christ Jesus and stand on that. Stand on the, the Bible said when you find a brother at fault, then you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to pray for them. He said when you are weak, that's when he is made strong. He said the strong was bad the infirmities of them that are weak. So we're so quick to now point a finger that we're not going to buy the bad the infirmity. I'm going to hold you up till you get through this one. I'm going to be right there for you till you get through this one. I'm going to be there for you till you build yourself up in your most holy faith. Amen, somebody. So now you can understand it's not longer in you, but it's the Christ that lives on the inside. So the devil wants to person execute the Christ on the inside of the body of the believers and we have no it, we have no knowledge of that thing. We don't really understand what he's doing when we buy into the lie of everybody else that's trying to bring a scandal to the church. Now let's flip it. Let's play angel's advocate. When we've done all that to stand, then what do we do when others allow them to sugarcoat the thing, others allow them to stay in their sin and allow them to still yet be able to pastor a church still yet be able to be over our brothers and sisters. And then God said, you forgive them. You forgive them. He said, because guess what? He forgave you. Now, the other things are between them and God. If that's between them and God. If, if anybody repents for anything, for real, for real, y'all, and then the Bible lets one understand that repent means to turn away. So now, God, in my flesh, well, no good thing, no clean thing, but I come to you as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a servant of the Most High God, I'm asking you for your forgiveness. I think that because of the energy that I told you all that crept in when we casualized church, that when we began to wear our little blue jeans, and come on, and, and the music changed, the atmosphere changed, change, everything about the persona of the church, the personality of the church, the fiber of the church at that time, the character, the moral characteristics, everything changed at that time. This is what we're in now, the new church. Thus it now being birthed, the new church. Thus it being birthed, James said, when, evil, when confusion comes in, all evil works comes in with him. So the body of Christ was confused whether or not we're supposed to dress up on the Sabbath day, whether we're supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the, word, unto the Lord, being not conformed to this world but being transformed by the renewing of our mind so now you got the brothers with the skinny g come on up in here got the pants on so tight uh, uh his, his his suits are so tight amen somebody that you look at them now because you question their sexuality you, you you're questioning their moral uh, moralistics now because the spirit crept up in the house of god so now we live in entertainment rather than the power of the holy ghost we live in energy rather than the power of the holy ghost 
And it started with that one little thing. Look at it. Let's just be real and honest. The Holy Ghost revealed this to me yesterday. He revealed it to me so plainly yesterday. He said, this was the onslaught of the church that we see right now when we changed and dumb it down, just a simple little thing of your attire. He's not going to come in and tell you up and tear your church up with this. He's going to make you feel the most easiest thing, the most antiquated thing. Uh, it wouldn't happen like that. What is she talking about? I'm talking about what God said. That's what I'm talking about. He said the enemy came in and released a soul spirit on the church. Now the church has been persecuted. Amen, somebody, because we pulled ourselves away from a foundation that God had made in the body of Christ. The foundation of God standing sure, having this seal. Them that name the name of God, we must depart from iniquity. So now we have what? We are now having are people that have changed the foundation of God, pushed Jesus out of the equation, no presence of God and no power of God, and then the world loves it. The world has everyone right where he wants them. The devil has the body of Christ right where he wants them, rightly divided. Amen. He has them so divided that the house cannot stand. He has them in division. He has them so in an antiquated situation that you don't know which one is right, which one is wrong, what do I believe, where do I go, oh me, oh my, what am I going to do? If you know who God is on the inside of you, you got to be able to stand and still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so now people have the misnomers, the mistrust, amen somebody, the misbelief in everything that's going on. And we're buying into it, y'all. We're buying into the same thing that the devil wants us to do. He wants for those uh, ex-pastors to be bloggers and down and low rate the house of God. He wants for everybody to have scandals attached to their name. How do you know everybody's telling the truth about that pastor? Because they said that he impregnated this woman for real? Is he a homosexual for real? Is she a lesbian for real? And so we're so easy to buy into the lie of the devil that we never say, well, God, have mercy on them, Father. Well, Lord, please forgive them. What did Jesus say? He said, I can call Ebo Shai. Yes, Holy Ghost. He said, I can call legions of angels right now to take me down off of this cross. I can make sure that you will never persecute me. You'll never kill me. But have mercy on them, God, for they know not what they do. Why can't we as a body of Christ say, now, God, let's fall on our knees. It's time for a shut-in. And they oh, shy. It's time for us to pray for the body of Christ. It's time for us to pray for the men and women of God that are being persecuted by of this soul spirit that are being lied on and even those that are really uh, are falling into the trap. they are falling into the scandal line of Satan. They're now they're in the grips of Satan. There are homosexuals in your pulpit. Yes, there are. There are lesbians in your pulpit. Yes, they are. But God lets us know. He Paul said, I've got a thorn in my flesh. And what is this thing? He said, three times I've asked you to help me with this thing, God. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Are we going to always stay that way? No, you're not. Are you going to preach and spew that foolishness in my life? No, I'm not. But God will give you an opportunity to to repent and get it together. Get your stuff together. Get that stuff together. But because we allow the world to dictate to us our leadership, we overthink it. We pull it into a place that we're now, we're being tormented by the spirits ourselves. And the saddest thing about when sin comes in the pulpit, the saddest thing about that, y'all, is that familiar spirit is now orchestrated in the body of Christ. Those that they were not in a struggle, uh, those that were not homosexual tendencies or what have you, whatever it may be, lesbian, gay, whatever it is, those spirits. Uh, Y'all heard about the little thing, and, and I better not say the names because they say when you say the names, they take my videos off. A particular situation happened in Miami over the weekend, and there were some stars that had children that were 11 years old, and they took their children to a gay pride day because the 11-year-old said that they're gay. And so the, the, the stepmother and the father allegedly I took the child to the gay pride day because this child is already identifying as what his sexuality is going to be. You're 11 years old. How do you know what you're going to be? The Bible says train up a child in the way they ought to go and they will soon not depart from it. So what are you training your child now that you're letting them buy into that, the lie of the devil at an early age? Come on. Come on, emotions. They lead us to overthink things in our life sometimes. And so I caution the parents that will even allow the devil to come and manipulate your child's mind at such an early age. I caution the parents. Amen, somebody. Uh, when we are, uh, when an event uh, looms onto the horizon uh, that promises to, to be painful or otherwise unpleasant, do we overthink it? We got a tendency sometimes to overthink the thing. That's just like a pregnant lady. Uh, when you're pregnant and you're a child, sometimes we overthink the upcoming labor and delivery experience. And then mentally, uh, we live through the anticipated agony and the possibility of a tragic outcome as a way of preparing ourselves. Well, I know this is going to hurt. When you get ready to go to the dentist, 
I, I'm gonna take me some Tylenol before I get there because I know if they don't shoot me up good, if they don't numb that nerve, then things are gonna happen so bad, it's gonna hurt so bad, it's gonna be so uncomfortable. You're talking yourself into a tizzy. Come on, you overprocessed the thing, you overthought the thing, and so now the thing that you hated the most came upon you. You get in the chair, as soon as you get there, you can feel the needle going in that gum because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So now you're utilizing a thought process that's now ready to have pain. You're releasing a thought process that wants to entertain that pain. And you're unaware of it. Don't even know uh, that there's not going to be any pain, that I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me, that greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. Have I a real prayer line this morning? So we overthink a thing. We have a tendency to overthink it. Then the men Mentally live through the anticipated agony and possible tragic outcomes in a way of preparing yourself for the event. We can also overthink of past events or conflicts in our lives as well. Rehashing every uh, syllable or every action taken and every effort to what? To process it. But of course, such overthinking does no good. Doesn't help you at all. What's done is done. Introverts are more prone to overthinking than extroverts to your natural tendencies to live inside your own head. An introvert, sometimes, amen, as, let me say it again, introverts are more prone to overthinking than extroverts due to your own natural tendency to live inside of your own head. Nobody can't tell you anything. They can't let you see there's a better way to do this thing. You got your own objective, and no matter what anybody says, it's going to be your way or the highway. What are we doing, body of Christ? What are we doing? What, what, what happened to the innocence of the church of the bygone millennium? Yeah, they were um, tight. Yeah, they were strict. Most, majority of the time they were unlearned, but they had a prayer life. And they had a real relationship with God. And they knew that God supplied their needs. We talked about this in past times, how back in the days when we had all of the things in our communities, that we had our own stores, we had our own bowling alleys, we had our own skating rinks in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood itself. Some progressions aren't good. Some we We're striving for uh, progressions in our communities, but does your community favor you now? Uh, are you the ones that you're going to buy things from your store? Do you see someone that looks like you in that store now? Or is it another person that doesn't look like you that, that you're buying things from and you're giving your money to? Uh, what has happened to us? One way I feel that we can avoid overthinking and in any subject is to incorporate scripture and prayer into your thoughts. If we would incorporate scripture and prayer into every thought that we have, the psalmist gives us an excellent example in Psalms, the 94th division and verse 19, when he says, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, when I overthink a thing, when I become so overwhelmed with something that it begins to consume me, then your consolation delights my soul. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So we've got to learn how to take the word of God. We have to learn how to allow him to transform us into his image and his likeness. Amen. We've got to learn how to allow the word of God to go to work in our lives. Many of us, I find that right now, day, uh, that the psalms were written by overthinkers who were facing danger and emotional unrest and fear and despair. So those psalms at that time, they boldly wrote about their anxiousness. They boldly wrote about their thoughts then they turn them into a worship of God. That's just like the songwriters, uh, people that write their own songs and, and they, they create things through songs. They, they're creating from the pain on the inside. Uh, Mary J. Blige, everybody was waiting on her because of her divorce. Oh, Mary's going to write good now because she, she, she writes the best when she's hurt. She writes the best, when, I'm sorry, to delete that name. A singer uh, could sing about anything and so we know that some of their best works come from their pain. Some of their best works come from a place of pain. So we listen to them, amen, we listen to their examples and they began to teach us from the examples that they've had in life, from their disappointments, from their heartaches, from their letdowns, and they come from a place in their heart. They don't have to overthink it then because they've already lived it. They don't have to continue to re-examine it because they've already gone through it. So now, that's normal. When it becomes a lifestyle of worry or anxiety, then we need to change the things in our life. We need to change the finger pointing that we're doing in the body of Christ because it does no one any good for the church to be torn down but the devil. I listen at this person that's a blogger, and they got all the scandals on the pastors and the churches, and they say, they say I bring a little humor to it so that we can uh, lighten it up. But I'm looking at all the comments, people, that's why I don't go to church anymore. That's why I left the church. Uh, that's why I'm an atheist. That's why I don't believe in God. And I'm saying the format that they have 
rather than if you're going to pull a man that way, once you lure him in, then give him Bible. Give them uh, reasoning. Give them rationale. Let them know the purpose of Jesus for real. Come on. Let them know exactly what God came for. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Why are we going to now go into Satan's territory where he has domain over their mindset right now, where he's already manipulated them enough to move away from the house of God, to pull away from the house of God? Then you're going to push him even further away by the accusations, by the ridiculing, by the finger pointing, by the scandals, by the lies. Incorporate scripture into your thoughts. Psalms, the sixth division, is one such prayer. Verse 6, he describes the condition of many who overthink. The Bible says, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. Yet the author David, he doesn't stop there. Psalm ends with these words, the Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overthrown with shame and anguish, and they will turn back and suddenly be put to death, or put to shame. That's verses 9 and verses 10 in that same book of Psalms, the sixth division. He talks about what's going on, but he says, but God, but God. He brings up the situation, fear, despair, agony, unrest, emotional uh, uh, situations, facing anger, facing fear. All night long I cry, my sofa full of tears, my bed full of tears, but... But the Lord has heard my cry. He heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish, and they will be, they will be turned back and suddenly be put to shame. I'm getting ready to close in a few minutes. Satan capitalizes on our inclinations to overthink by creating doubts and fears about our spiritual things. Doubts and fears about your leaders. Doubts and fears about the body of Christ. We're talking about this morning reprocessing your thoughts. He puts fears in our life about nobody's living right. The church just wants your money. That's the biggest lie you ever told. That's the only one to keep going all their life. That church just wants your money. That man one God just wants your money. And everybody loves to say it. They buy into that lie of Satan. Some Christians who overthink have difficulty resting in their salvation because they overanalyze their grace based upon relationship with God rather than resting in the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. We let the devil tell us so much stuff. We let him make us come with conclusions we never thought for ourselves. Uh, we, we point fingers at everybody, but we never look at ourselves. Until God came in our lives, who were we? Uh, until God really came and cleansed us and washed us in his blood, saved us, sanctified us, purified us, regenerated us, dipped us in the water, came up a, 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 a resurrected image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why can't I assist my brother that's in a weakened position now? Why can't I assist my sister that's going through fornication right now that doesn't understand that you don't put footprints on the ceiling when you're waiting on Boaz because all the bozos are going to come at you? Why, why, why can't you support her in those times in her life where she's weakened rather than telling everybody else, Sister so-and-so messed it up, Sister so-and-so ain't saved. Come on. What did they tell Job? They say, Job, for all that you're going through, you must not be saved. Here comes the point, finger pointing. Here comes the judgment. Here comes the doubt. Overthinking a situation. And then pushing him in a place where the wife even says, you ought to just curse God and die. I think the body of Christ is allowing the devil to curse God now. I think the Saul spirit, the platform that Saul has in this body of Christ, that everybody wants to find a scandal. We're running to hear the next news, running to hear the next one that's fall, running to hear everything. They're comparing rappers with the church. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? What has the church, the ecclesia, not the brick and mortar walls, but this person here, you and I, the temple of the Holy Ghost, God's property, God's interpretation on the earth. What have we allowed to creep in the house of God? So much so that we're such miserable people and hurting people and we don't utilize the power that we have. Do you know how much power you have on a bended knee? Do you know how much power you have on an unspoken, a language unknown unto Satan, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in unknown tongues? That's your power source right there. That's not energy. That's not entertainment. That's power. And God wants us to be a body of Christ so disciplined by him that Jesus said, oh, you know my disciples. You know they're mine because of the way they treat each other. 
How can we know who we are the way we treat each other? Am I my brother's keeper? Jesus said, Jesus said, you shall know them to be my disciples by the way they treat each other. So how are we treating each other, y'all? Come on. You shall know the tree by the fruit it bear. So, so where are the real trees? Where are the real disciples? What are we reproducing? Are we reproducing just the ang angles that Satan wants us to have? The, the, the hardships? The dysfunctionalities, the finger pointing, the lies, the scandals, the unfair, unfair judgment, judgments and treatments. Come on, apostles. Come on, pastors. Come on, laypersons. Where are we now? Are we overthinking a thing now that we don't know how to reprocess our thoughts and bring into captivity every thought that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God? Have we not seen the enemy come in the house of God and just tear it down? No real structuring, no real foundation. And it started with a simple thing that everybody thought was okay. You can come casually. You can come as you are. No, 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 you can't. No, you can't. Because now that's confusion. And when confusion comes in, all evil works comes in with it. Now you got the skinny leg pants, the too tight pants, the appearance of those that may be questionable in there desire for uh, sex, uh, maybe sexual identity crisis. And, and you know what? The, the, one of the young men that were active, they, he said, I'm a homosexual and I, I practice it. He says, now, when those pastors look like that, we can identify with that spirit in them. And he said, my objective now is to, is to make you feel comfortable in who you are because you obviously fooled your wife that you're confused and that's not who you really want to be. Do you know what signs they sent out now? Uh, that we can see the, the print of your, the front of your man structuring and everything in those pants you wear. Uh, the ladies that, that wear the too tight clothing uh, that are subjective and seductiveness, suggestions. And are we running the people away from the house of God? Because we refuse to be the church. We refuse to be the church. He said, I'm coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He wasn't talking about that you're perfect. He wasn't talking about that you cross every I, dot every T. Nobody's perfect. We're going to go back to Eden where we can live in that perfection again. We're striving to go back to Eden. But he's saying the church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish is one that the devil hasn't dipped in dirt, hasn't taken you to a place where you've spotted your garments, haven't gotten to the place where you have no power of God. That's what he's talking about, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Come on. You wrinkle up the church. You, you, you take it to a place and you just push and wrinkle it up. He said, you, you, you just almost tear my church apart. That's what he's talking about. Spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. He said, you, you're not spotted up now because you've not bought into the angles of the devil. You not have bought into the lies of the devil. The evidence that Satan has sent against the house of God, the accusations, the stuff, his uh, formatted issues that he places against the body of Christ. Then we began to fight with each other. We began to point fingers at everybody. Do y'all... Churches even fellowship anymore? Does anybody come and, and all come together? Not if you don't have the big format, if you don't have the big platform, if you're not one of the megas. Hmm. Stop overthinking things and let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then allow God to build his house back together. Allow the structuring of God's plans to be implemented in our lives. I want for the body of Christ this morning, I want for you, according to the book of John, he said that my disciples shall be known by the way they love each other. You know their minds by the way they treat each other. Are we going to be known that way? Or are we going to allow this Saul spirit that has crept up into the universe, and especially against the house of God, to target us? He said even the very elect shall be fooled if possible. Judgment begins in the house of God. So we understand that the assignment of the devil is to point a finger at the house of God. Judgment begins with the house of God. We understand that. So that's where we're in right now. But are we going to allow God to judge it? Are we going to let man's tongue judge who we are? Are we going to allow your opinion and your, your, uh, your, your, your hurt, your pain, hurting people hurt people? And so when people get aggravated and frustrated, they don't uh, just go by themselves. They got to get everybody and pull them in with them and try to make the, the, the ship sink because of their indiscretions or their hurt or their misunderstandings, their innuendos, their interpretation of what happened. It, you can, uh, something can happen in a body of Christ and somebody examines it or they accept it one way or they feel it happened that way and it never really happened that way at all. But by the time you hear the story, you could have been a witness to it. You could have saw exactly what happened. And you'll say, no, that's not what really happened. No, it didn't happen that way. I don't, that was not my perception of that. 
but somebody else's interpretation of their perception was totally different than yours. So when they tell the story, if you don't correct it at that time, or you say, well, I didn't see it that way. I didn't perceive it to be as such. And then the lie goes on and then it snowballs. And then it takes so many people in the fault finding committee at that time to keep the thing going and it should never have been. Let's stop overthinking things. Let's process it through the word of God and by his spirit and let the conclusion of the matter be what God has to say about it, not the devil. This is God's church. This is the ecclesia. That's you. That's you. Did I tell you it was you as well? And that's you as well. You are the body of Christ. You are the ecclesia. You are the called out one that God wants to separate us from the Saul spirit. There's a spirit of persecution that is here now to ridicule the church. That is to tear down the structure of God's intent, the very precious jewel of God, the ointment of God. Yes, God, the very presence of God. The enemy has been sent to tear down the structure and the presence of God. And God said, I'm a jealous God and I have no other gods before me. Saul is trying to be the God of the church and the church has no aware of it. He had been sent to persecute the Christians, to persecute the body of Christ. But God got a hold of Saul. Can I share with you this morning that God's getting ready to get a hold of this Saul. And he's going to change the name around. He's going to really meet the real Christ, the real Lord and Savior. He said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? What are you doing? Same way the Legion said. He identified who Jesus was as soon as Jesus came around. Jesus is not coming around. The reason the church is in the way it's in right now. Predicament is in right now. Your men and women of God are around. Your servants of God are around. But it's Jesus there. When Jesus came, people's lives were changed. I'm going to say that until he comes back to redeem our soul. Everybody that Jesus came in contact with, they were never the same when they came in his presence. They were never the same. He didn't leave a paralytic paralyzed. He didn't leave a, 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 a deaf man's ear un, a deaf and dumb. Come on. He didn't let a blind man stay blind. Come on. When, he came in the, when they came in the presence of God, everything was made whole and everything was made new. Reprocess your thoughts. Come see, I met a man. Meet this real man, Jesus, for real, that's ready to kill the Saul spirit that's attacking the body of Christ. Don't allow the devil to use your tongue against the house of God. Don't allow the devil to use your tongue to be a witness against your servants, your, your pastors, your shepherds, those that watch over your soul. The Bible says that God is going to do what? He's going to give us pastors after his own heart. And he does it. Everybody's not sinning. Everybody's not foolish. Everybody's not running rampant. Everybody's not in for filthy lucre. Everybody's not using and abusing the body of Christ. Everybody's not challenged with their sexual identity. There are people that really love God. There are people that really want to be saved for real, for real, y'all. That wants their life to turn around for real. But we have to be the body of Christ that God wants us to be. Don't be that devil's interpretation, uh, uh, the counterfeit, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Own it, live it, become it. Own it, live it, become it. And watch God. Our God, our Father, I've done what you called me to do today. You said to teach your people how to reprocess their thoughts. That even in the olden days that we thought was so bad and so many people have so many horrible, horrific things to say about the structure of the church, the rules and regulations of the church in the olden days. And you can't do this and you can't do that. But have we gone so far now, God, that we don't have the foundation? Have we gone so far not to be our parents and our grandparents and not to preach the gospel that they preached that we've now come up with a new doctrine? A new whole lifestyle that's not conducive for our salvation. And so, Father, we bring your people into remembrance now that it takes godly sorrow that worketh repentance unto salvation. We bring your people to that place now, holiness without which no man can see God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There's a way that seems right unto man, but such as that is destruction. We bring your people back to the remembrance that for God I live and for God I die. Father, release your spirit in this atmosphere again. I pray that you will blanket the universe with your presence and your power. The subliminal message that Satan has sent to the house of God, they have no knowledge of it, none whatsoever. They don't know how this spirit crept up into the house of God, but you showed me on yesterday. It was a simple thing as changing your attire, a simple thing as changing your wardrobe when you come into the presence of the king, that they now casually pushed you out of the way, pushed out the foundation that I'm going to see the king 
And so now they were confused. Do we dress up in church or do we not? Do we look like we go to the ball game, pep rally, in the house of God? And people's minds were confused. Confusion comes in, all evil works comes in with it. So now the entire personality of the body of Christ has been transitioned into something totally different than what you expected for your people. Take us back to Eden, God. Give, let us back to the Garden of Eden, Father. That place where you gave us dominion and you gave us power. And let there be no admixtures in this body of Christ. Raise up a people, God, that are willing to have the Damascus experience. That are willing to die to the flesh and the deeds thereof. And be a real holy nation as unto the Lord. I pray for those leaders, God, that have been placed, come in places of fault. I pray for those leaders, Father, that have had shortcomings in their lives. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We've got something in our lives that we need for you to work on and we need for you to adjust. And so those that have the format and the platform that the entire world is looking upon their ministries and scrutinizing them and, and holding in a place, Father, that they want to point fingers at them. Have mercy on this body of Christ. Have mercy on their souls. I pray, Father, that they will come to a place of repentance and forgiveness, first of all, within themselves. And whatever things that happened on the inside of them as children and they were never delivered from, I pray, Father, that you will now release the deliverance ministry in their spirit, cast the devil out, pull it down, the strongholds that present themselves in their lives. Hurting people hurt people. And so transform the church, God. Reunite the church, Father. Reform the church. Let the reformation process begin this day. And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do, how you strengthen your people this day, God. I thank you in advance how our children will not suffer, how they will not be passed through the fire. You told them the gods of Amolek, don't take those children through the fire. Don't let them go through those things. Don't let them be persecuted. We do as such when we never give them better examples and we never pull them out of uh, obscurity and hardships and we don't introduce them to the real Lord Jesus Christ, our real Savior. I thank you for change in the body of Christ. The Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, none of those enemies, the Amorites, none of those enemies, the Molech spirit, none of those enemies, God, shall be able to tear down the house of God. You said upon this rock, I build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So let the people of God not be divided House divided cannot stand. Let there be no division in the body of Christ. Let there be no finger pointing, no fault fight. Not from us, not from us. Let it be the accusations and ridiculing from the world, but not from the church. You shall know my disciples by the way they love each other. That's your word, Father. Let us be the loving church. Let us be the forgiving church. Let us be the faithful church, but let us be the powerful church. And I bless every person one by one and name by name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We'd like to bless God once again this morning for this word of God, for those that are here this morning that want to embrace change in your lives. I um, themed this from that, what I've been listening to, and I did it intentionally now. At first I thought, well, you know how you just run up on something in social media, and you said, oh, there they go, bashing another pastor. There they go. Now, these three pastors here raped a little girl. These four here did this. This man of God. It's just so much. It, is, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I said, God, what is happening? He said, the Saul spirit has been released over the body of Christ. The Saul spirit that's persecuting the church. And a lot of times people are falling over into the scandalon, the preset trap that Satan set. And they're pulled and lured right in, and they fall right in. And rather than we rescuing them, rather than we sending them a lifeline, rather than we standing in the gap when they're weak to be made strong for them, we do the same thing that the devil does. We find them in quicksand, and we put our foot on top of their head and push them down in further. And that, you shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have. No, 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 no. We don't have the same attitude that the world has. How many times am I going to forgive my brother? 70 times 70? In each day and every day. The same way that Jesus forgave us. We don't give them a pass to sin, but we strengthen them in their time of weakness, in their time of sorrow. We stand and support them until God says, don't pray for them. Now in the book of Jeremiah, God said, mm -mm, don't even pray for me. Don't even pray no prayer for me for them no more. Mm -mm, I, don't even say a word. Don't say a word. Because when you give them an ample opportunity to change their lives, 
then it's up to them what they do after that. It's up to you what you do after you've heard this word today. Are you mad? Are you disgruntled? Have you walked away from the house of God? Do you not have a good church home? Yes, some questionable things going on. That's for sure, for sure. <laughs> you got to know who Jesus is. You got to know who Jesus is. You got to know who he is. If you're one in a, in a position now that you don't have a church and you're not knowing what to do, where to go, you may be new in a city, you may just be so disconnected, I just don't want to join one. I'm not affiliated with one right now. Your tithes are still, you're still, you're still responsible for your tithes and you're still responsible for your offerings. So you don't want to be walking around in a cursed situation. The Bible says you live in a curse uh, when you rob God. Will a man rob God? He said, you robbed me with your tithing and your offerings. And so if you're not in that affiliation, we have a covering called DIMAC. Amen. We have an apostolic covering called DIMAC, Dimensions International Apostolic Ministries, where we cover you. Amen. We cover you in the times of transition, in the times of where God is implementing in your lives, where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do. You can give your tithes and, and your offerings to DIMAC uh, until you find a good church home. Uh, use the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 681868. Orlando, Florida, 32868. Send in your tithes and your offerings to the ministry, to the ministry, to the ministry that you're in agreement with the word of God. Amen. Until you find that church to say, okay, this is the church that's feeding my spirit now. If this prayer line is the only one that's feeding your spirit, then your tithes and your offerings are supposed to come to the prayer line. That's biblical. That's the word of God. You sow into that which is sowing into you. And I believe God. You're in that transition. Now, if you have a church, your tithes go to your church. If you have a church home, your tithes go to that church. But if you're in transition and you're in a position that you're not really attending anybody's church, you're visiting other churches or whatever, be careful for the ground you sow on. So you sow your tithes and your offerings to the DIMAC, D-I-M-A-C, Dimensions International Ministries Apostolic Covering. Amen. Uh, to the seed, uh, to the dimensions. And uh, God will continue to watch over you. It's called watch care. We're watching over you until you're in a place carefully in a good church that God would have you to be in. And I believe God. Well, we pray that this word has really been a blessing to someone. We pray that we have spoken something in your spirit that will allow you to look at yourselves and look at the situation. See what's going on. All these finger pointings, all of these. You ever seen so much stuff in the house of God? You ever seen, well, social media is one of the things. A lot of things have been happening a long time, but because of social media now, there's been so much stuff being posted, being said, being uh, stated, but it's just overwhelming for the body of Christ. And it's not pleasing as unto the Lord for so much finger pointing to be sent against his people. The enemy wants to tear down the house of God. He wants to pull away as many people. He wants to scatter the sheep. And once the sheep are scattered, they have no shepherd. He wants to take the shepherds out of their position. He wants to take those that have been called, called by God not to even want to be a part of it. Not to even, I tell y'all, don't call me pastor. I, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. If that name, to be attached with the name that I see going on now, don't call me pastor. I'm God's servant, servant leader, servant mother, whatever you want to call me. Amen. I don't want to be identified with that body that's persecuting the body of Christ right now. I don't want to be identified with that. But I am a child of God. I'm a servant of the Most High God. I serve Jesus Christ. I serve him. He is my Lord and Savior. Amen. So don't get it wrong. Don't go out saying the lady backslid and all this old foolishness that the devil will speak to your spirits. Amen. I pastored for 20 years. I, I'm not pastoring anymore. So why would I carry the title pastor if I'm not pastoring? Does the label go on beyond your, your stint? Does it go on beyond your, your duties in the pulpit? Some people still call themselves pastor and they don't have a congregation. I don't know how they do that. That's between them and God. That's between them and God. I don't know. I have a doctorate in theology, a earned doctorate in theology, not uh, amen somebody, not an honored and earned. And so we've done what we're supposed to do. That's the title. That's the title. But who are we in God? And I bless God for each and every one of this one. This is the devil busting, the demon chasing, the woman, the wisdom, and the word. Moses with a skirt on. I'll grow you up if you let me. Ain't a thing the devil can do about it. Please, 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 if you all would, please, please go and subscribe to my page on YouTube. We cannot broadcast live on YouTube because we don't have a thousand followers. However, they say you can have a webcam and some other equipment that I told you all months ago that we needed to buy before they even said that the Holy Ghost had already prompted my spirit of what we needed to do. So that's him. And y'all heard it. Y'all heard me say months ago, y'all, let's get some new equipment. God gave me another assignment on, on our YouTube. I need to update my equipment. I need to do something. And now it's come. Friday, they said you can't broadcast live because 
uh, you don't have a thousand subscribers, but if you didn't, you still can broadcast live with a webcam and some other thing they know they name that we don't have. I don't have any of that. And so we want to go back live every morning uh, on Facebook. We can record it, but we can't do it live. But what God has given me is I'm going to do a live broadcast on YouTube where people are going to call in and they're going to get delivered in their calling. You're going to tell me what's the problem, what the situation is, how can we help you, how can we address you, and it's going to be for the world. And I believe God. What about you? Please go over to Dr. Loretta B. Harris on the YouTube page and press the subscribe button so that we can get those numbers up. I think about maybe 50 people did it over the weekend from what I can see on the numbers, but we need for it to, to, to go ahead. And I, I thought by the weekend, I said, man, God's people to do it. We'll be right back on on Tuesday morning. And maybe people forget. Maybe you forget. Maybe it slips your mind or whatever, but Let's just be mature. Let's get more active in what we do. Let's be attentive in what we say we're going to do. We send out so many uh, blasts to people and so many uh, things to people, alerts or whatever, to do notifications for them to do it. And I guess uh, they maybe forgot or whatever. I'm not asking you to support me. I'm just saying put the numbers up there so that I can go. And you don't have to follow me. Just subscribe so that the other people, that we can be visible for them, for them to get delivered. I'm not trying to push anybody to be with me, follow me or whatever. I just need that little... Thing for you to subscribe to that page so we can do what God called us to do. Amen. We bless God for you. We say to each and every one of you on this Fat Tuesday, prayer, healing, anointed teaching to live fully and live freely. Deuces. Peace out. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, at